Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Welcome tonight to our TMBT Media Podcast uh, in conjunction with our TMBT Argentina, uh, TMBT Las Vegas. Uh, We're coming live to you um, tonight with a couple of our players, our TMBT pros tonight. We're lucky to have them with us. Uh, We have Jamel Calloway from Queens, New York, who is a guard. Hey, We have Shaquem Jackson. I'm also a guard from Crestview, Florida. We have Keith Jackson, guard forward from Newark, New Jersey. And we want to welcome these guys in tonight. Guys, can you hear me? Yeah. Good. And hey, how's everybody doing tonight? How's everybody doing? Um, how you guys doing? I want to say thank you guys for taking the time out um, of your busy schedule and uh, taking some time to talk with Coach tonight. Uh, we got some listeners on here, um, our TMBT family, um, as we call it, and uh and we want to welcome you guys to the family. Uh, most of you guys are uh, new clients, new signees. Uh, for those of you uh, that are listening, you guys can go onto our social media and our websites, and you guys can see uh, these young men and their pictures and kind of see what they look like, uh, what positions they play. You can go to our website and find out a little bit more about them. I uh, want to say thank you to you guys. Um uh, also may be having Kasim Green, who is another one of our clients, one of our TMBT pros. He may be chiming in tonight from work. Um, we were having some technical difficulties with this Skype, so he may be joining us um, a bit later. Um, guys, how's everything going? Good. 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 Well, pretty good. Good, guys. <laughs> uh, really proud of you guys. Of course, I tell you this all the time, but I uh, really want to say thank you for a hey, believing in us. Uh, um, trust in our process. Uh, these three young men will be traveling with us to Argentina in January. Uh, everyone uh, on this call will be traveling with us to Argentina uh, as a part of our TNBT Argentina, uh, going to Buenos Aires from January 7th through the 14th. Okay, so uh, we're going to start it right off here tonight. Um, Keith Jackson, we're going to start off with you. Um, tell us a little bit about yourself. Uh, welcome once again. Um, tell us a little bit about yourself, your path, your life, uh, and your story. Um, give us the Keith Jackson story. Got it. Got it. We'll definitely appreciate you having me here. Um, starting from the beginning, uh, lived in Jersey first, hadn't played any organized ball until high school. Uh, ended up moving to Phoenix, Arizona, played for three different high schools out there. Uh, Valley Vista, uh, Dysart High School, and Desert Edge High School. Went to the Final Four with Desert Edge and Dysart. Um, ended up not winning the championship at all in high school. Um, after being done with that, I played Juco ball in Arizona and also in North Carolina at Guilford Tech. Um, played very well at both schools. Ended up transferring to a four-year school in Missouri as well. Um where we took them to their first conference tournament, conference championship ever in school history. Uh, um, two back-to-back 20-plus win seasons, and then uh, lost in the conference championship as well. So um, after that, my college career was pretty much put to a halt. I had a couple of family uh, things I had to handle in the midst of that, and now I've just been blessed with this opportunity to possibly be able to go to Argentina with Melvin now. So. Um, we're glad to have you a part of it uh, with us, of, of course, of what we're doing. Um, talk a little bit, Keith. Um, you and I talk daily, uh, but tell the audience a little bit about your. I um, hope you don't mind me sharing. Um, you and I had talked about uh, my mom and my dad uh, also passing, so uh, you have some things that um, I think you are using as inspiration uh, that have been going on with your family. Share a little bit of that with the younger players, those players that may be listening that uh, may need. Some positive energy, some type of uh, inspiration. We're hoping that your story, um, hearing your voice tonight, 
um, can inspire those young men, um, whether they're in middle school, high school, college, or they're trying to play pro basketball. We're hoping that your words and and that to let them know that uh, we've all been through something. And so we are, um, the name of this program is Globe Warriors. Uh, this is our TMBT podcast, Globe Warriors. And I named it that because some people think that basketball um, is the only place where you have to battle. Um, but that's not true. We're human beings. We all have to battle in life. Um, be able to overcome certain situations. So um, if you don't mind sharing, share a little bit uh, with us uh, um, about your family and uh, what what motivates you, what keeps you going. Definitely. Well, one of my first motivations definitely coming up was my older brother. Uh, he played ball as well. I also had an older uncle who um, was also very, very good, broke a lot of records, played in college as well, uh, didn't play after that. Um, but then the other motivation that I had was also my mother uh, and my father. Um, my mom was diagnosed with uh, stage four cancer while I was playing ball in Missouri. So I got that news. Mm-hmm. As we all know, this game is 80% mental, 20% physical. So um, yes, that, that definitely kept kept the fire lit under me to try to want to keep things going, even though I had to deal with the other aspect of what's going on in my family as well so um mm. i kind of just used to stay a, to stay afloat and stay on the right track you know, a lot of guys can, can crumble or give up on the game or really just just hang it up because of what's going on in their personal life but just using it as motivation and, and staying motivated and keeping god first as well so that's my motivation yes sir that's uh that to me is more important than any sport of basketball uh to continue on uh, most of us know that basketball is hard enough by itself, but when you have things that can maybe um, not derail you, but make you take some type of detour to take uh, um, to take on family issues or um, whatever happened, whatever God puts in our path, we try to uh, listen to him, confide in him, and continue to push forward in the way that we uh, know that he wants us to. Same thing with our mothers, fathers, grandmothers. So uh, all of us, me included, uh, I have been in situations. Of course, my father passed when I was 11 years old. And uh, certain things that guide us, certain things that we don't always have, um, um, we don't always have control over. Of course, it's not in our hands, but we have to use them and know that uh, they are in a better place. Of course, we know that heaven is always a better place than earth. Um, I don't want to get too spiritual, uh, but uh, we will elaborate some more on it. Um, I'm hoping that all of my listeners, all of my uh, brothers and sisters, uh, TNBT family know uh, that we are God-fearing people. Milton Bell, first and foremost, is a God-fearing man. So um, I want to move it on. Uh, Shaquem Jackson, how you doing tonight? I'm good, guy. Good man. Um, talk to me a little bit. Um, talk to us a little bit. Um, to our listeners. Um, tell us a little bit about your story. Uh, who is Shaquem Jackson, Crestview, Florida? Um, tell us about your life. Your growing up. Your family. Um, what motivates you? Hi, I'm from Shaquem. I'm from Crestview, Florida, a little town, like 30 minutes from Panama City. Been playing sports since I was six. Started off playing football and soccer. Then I got into basketball. Team playing at sixth grade. I stopped playing soccer and football. Continued to play basketball. Then it got hot down here. I was like, nah, I'm just taking it inside. <laughs> so uh, I played all through middle school, high school, leading score, got defense award, MVP, senior year. That's after my senior year, that's when it got a little. Hit a little bump road. Um, I ain't had nowhere to go. Like I had school, but me, I, me personally, I wasn't the smartest, and I didn't like school like that. So I had to take a different route. I went to JUCO, went to Northwest Florida. Matter of fact, I was at my AU coach uh, practice, and the coach that came there because he had just moved in um, from being a new coach at Northwest Florida at my JUCO, and son was in there, and he came and watched me. He offered me a walk home position at JUCO. So I took it. So I was like, I'm going to school anyways. Might as well take it. Took that. Earned my scholarship for the second semester in the remainder of my JUCO. 
Juco went back to back national runner up. We lost in the finals both times. First time, uh, we should have won both times, to be honest with you, but hey, stuff happens. After that, I transferred and went to a four year school, University of Montebello, Alabama. You know nothing about it. It's like 30 minutes under Birmingham, Alabama. So small school, not too big, not too small. Went there. We uh went back to back to the uh, regional 16. Lost both times. So it's been a journey. Good. And then, <laughs> Good man. That's what makes us who we are today. I think what we've been able to survive uh, as a person. I'm take basketball out of it, but what you've been able to survive as a human being makes you who you are today, December 9th. 2018 so uh don't we are happy to have you share some people go through it and they don't want to share so that others can use it for or as inspiration uh we're proud to have our young men that are proud to be who they are and to have gone through what they have um continue shakim i'm telling a little more about yourself uh your motivation your family uh who do you uh who do you dedicate your hard work to? Do you dedicate it to your mom, your dad, your grandmother, or are you doing it for yourself, your kids? Um, talk to us. I'm dedicating it all this to my family, especially my parents. They do go beyond. They do everything. Even they don't have it, they, they make where I have it. Like this trip right now, they it's because of them I'm going. Right, right. And it, it ain't nobody that judge my parents. Like, even though we don't got it right now, they said they're going to make sure I can get on this because they know this is what I really want to do. And they keep continue to tell me to, to follow your dreams. Right. No matter how old you get, just keep going for your dream. Well, that's important to have parents uh, that believe in you, believe in what you're doing. Um, a lot of parents believe in your dreams, but very few are willing to support it financially. Um, I think there's a difference between... Uh, yes, son, or yes, daughter, I believe in you. But when you ask them to also believe uh, in you as far as the monetary aspect, uh, so that was big for us to know that your parents, uh, you're working, playing for your parents because they've given to you and now you want to give back to them. Uh, and so, like I said, Shaquem will be traveling uh, with us January 7th through the 14th down to uh Buenos Aires, Argentina, as a part of our TMBT Argentina uh, combine that we're having. Uh, we, um, we want to move on to Jamel Callaway. You here? Um, Jamel Callaway from Queens, New York. I'm there, Coach. Good, Jamel. Um, um, pretty much the same thing. Uh, talk to us a little bit. Same question pertains to you that we asked uh, Shaquem and Keith. Uh, just tell yes, us sir. what motivates you. Uh, how did you get into basketball? How was it growing up playing basketball in Queens, New York? Uh, just share with us a little bit about your story. Okay, give me one quick second. And it's, uh, well, first and foremost, I want to say thank you for having me on here. My name is Jamel Calloway. Jamel Calloway, I'm 27 from Queens, New York. Um, I started playing basketball because my uncle is Kenny the Jet Smith. So, it runs in the family. He put the ball in my hand when I was two years old. Him and my dad and I have never looked back since. Um, I say high school, my freshman year, I went to Archbishop Malloy trying to follow in my uncle's footsteps, but I didn't like it. So my sophomore year, I transferred to Williamsburg Prep, which is in Brooklyn, New York. I stayed there and I graduated from there with a 4.0, number three in my class academically. I had partial scholarships to every school in the country, but I couldn't afford to pay half or whatever else it was to go to any other school in the country. So I took the academic scholarship that I had for a ride to go to Bowling Green, and I walked on to Bowling Green University, uh, which is D1. Um, I played and practiced with them for about the first, I want to say, three months of the season. And then Coach Orr, who was the coach at the time, Coach Lewis Orr, basically came back to me and the two other guys that made the team and told us because the NCAA Clara House rules, which I felt was BS, told us that we couldn't. He couldn't keep us on the team, so I ended up stay. I ended up staying at Bowling Green another two years and playing club basketball. But I left after that. Since then, I've been playing semi pro in the AB. I played in the ABA with two different teams, and I actually had the chance to go play in Mexico in Huatuco 
which would be two summers ago, this May coming. Um, and three hours after I signed my contract, I got hit by a car and fractured my ankle. So I had to come back home. And I've been working in the gym and building my body back up since. And I've been blessed with this opportunity to continue my career now. Good. Well, good, Jamel. Good, I'm, I'm not sure if that was key for so, but I want to. Uh, I definitely got to talk to you, and I want to talk to you further on what you said as far as your mom. I'm sorry for your loss, cause I'm actually going through that right now as we speak. My mom actually got level three liver cancer, so at the end of the day, I'm I'm dealing with that and raising the son at the same time. So that's what pushes me to keep going forward. I, I can't lose right now. Failure is not an option, cause I am what holds my whole family together. Good, good man. Good. Sometime. We as sons or us as basketball players, we not necessarily need motivation, but when we are able to find motivation from a family member uh, that's going through something or has gone through something, uh, for me, it was my mom. Uh, my mom was the one that pushed me uh, and without even knowing. She was my, uh, my father passed when I was 11 years old from cancer of the lungs. So uh, my mom raised me from 11 until she passed when I was 40. So uh, my special someone was my mom. Uh, also, uh, my kids, uh, Devin and Maximilian Bell. But uh, when you do things for others and you take yourself out of the equation, it has a way of giving you, um, I don't want to say super superhuman strength, but when you're doing something for yourself, you may have step in doing it. You shouldn't, but it's possible. When you do something for someone else and you have someone else counting on you or you have other people counting on you, uh, it's, it's, it, it's something that I can't explain. Uh, so uh, all three of you guys, using what you have, sometimes I think we as humans, we don't realize that what we need to motivate us is already inside of us. Instead of looking for motivation from uh, a, a entertainer or a basketball player, I personally feel that each human being has something that can motivate them inside. It just takes that, that time or that uh, meditation or yoga or whatever uh, we use or, or people use, guys use to search deep inside. Um, I think each person has what it takes to motivate you. Um, Jamel Calloway may not be able to find uh, what motivates him um, inside of Keith Jackson, but inside of himself, I'm willing to bet that um, if we look and take the time and reflect back, uh, everyone has what it takes to be great. Um, what I want to do at this time, um, just one at a time, starting with you, Keith, I uh, want you to share your social media handles, your social media handles with our audience so that um, if we do have young people, young basketball players, uh, pros, middle school, whoever, I uh, want you to share your social media uh, handles on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, um, whatever you have. Um, just shout it out for us real quick. Uh, let's see, on, on Instagram, um, I'm that's S-K, T-H-A-T-S underscore S-K. Um, and on Twitter, I'm to double check that one. I'm on there a little rarely. It's uh, Keith underscore Jackson 24 on Twitter. And then on Snapchat, I'm also on there as well. Uh, it's Keith J underscore 24. Okay. And then uh, for Facebook, it's just Samuel Keith. Okay. All right. Um, Shaquem, how about you? Shout us out your uh, your handles. Okay. On Instagram and Snapchat, you can find me at Shaquem20, S-H-Y-K-E-E-M, 20. And on Twitter, you can find me at the guy underscore 20. Okay. Um, Jamel Calloway, um, let's hear yours. Hey, Jamel's still here? Uh, we may have lost him. Uh, we'll get his. That's okay. You got me. I'm here. I'm here. I'm here. I'm sorry. I had it on mute real quick. Um, my, 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 everything, everything, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, um, is Mel underscore Mamba, but that's Mel with a three. So it's M three L L underscore Mamba, M A M B A. Okay. Okay. Good. Um, throughout this, uh, uh, um, radio show, I'm going to ask you guys, you guys probably two more times to, 
to shout out your handles again so you'll have a chance to uh, shout those out later on in the program for those young men that want to to call or uh, want to get in contact with you or just get some type of uh, positive energy from you. Um, we try to make our guys available to the public. Of course, they're public guys. Uh, they're part of our TMBT pros, TMBT family. But we want to make sure that people that need to hear positive words from you can get that. Uh, also, uh, those three, uh, these three young men, their uh, social media handles will be on my Twitter and website as well. So I'll go ahead and shout mine out right now. Uh, and on Twitter, I am the Milton Bell team at Milton Bell team on Twitter. I think on Facebook, uh, I'm Milton Bell Basketball. Uh, we also have the Milton Bell team on Facebook. And on Instagram, um, I'm also um, at the Milton Bell team. Um, our website is www.tmbtmedia.com. Very simple. Uh, anyone looking to call into our show, um, please do so. Uh, you can call in live. Um, you can be on the air with us. Um, area code 702-908-1501. Um, that's area code 702-908-1501. Uh, you can call in, and uh, um, if you guys have family members or friends or anyone that wants to call in, you can. Uh, you can um, advise them to call in. We'll be here, and we'd love to hear from them. Uh, let's go back to um, Keith Jackson one more time. Keith, um, Tell me one of your accomplishments in life that you're most proud of. One of my most accomplishments I'm most proud of. Mm -hmm. um, doesn't have to be basketball related. Uh, uh, and it can be graduating from high school, graduating from college. Uh, basketball, um, I don't want it to only be basketball. I don't want you to think that it has to be basketball. But uh, anything that you're most proud of, uh, sometimes it can be a son, it can be... Uh, graduating from college, finishing high school, um, I'll leave that up to you. Uh, I'm going to be completely honest with you. The thing that I'm most proud of right now um, is the fact that I was able to, like, I guess, say thank you to my mom before she actually went. So, you know what I'm saying? So I, I put everything on hold that I had going on in my life, uh, whatever the sacrifice may have been at that moment. And, I, you know what I'm saying, I did everything that I could to to say goodbye in, in, a, in a matter and, and take care of that aspect and that part and what I had going on in my head meant so good, good out of everything that I can think of whether it be traveling the, the country playing ball getting out of the hood and, and staying alive and graduating high school I mean I feel like that's a bunch of stuff that you're, you're kind of obli obligated to do as growing up as a man in the world period but the things that mean a little bit more to me is, is sacrificing something that you're not obligated to do and mm. still getting it done. Yes, sir. While doing everything else that you need to do for your life as well. So, Yes, sir. Well said, yeah. young man. Well said. Shaquem Jackson, same question. Uh, tell me about um, an accomplishment in your life that you are most proud of. I'm going to have to say receiving my bachelor's degree mm -hmm. in kinesiology. That's huge, brother. Um, mm -hmm. um, that's huge. Um, I think sometimes, um, not being too racial or too political, but I think that uh, sometimes African-American basketball players are undervalued. And when I say undervalued, I mean uh, most people see us as just basketball players, that we go to these universities just to play basketball. But um, we have so many men... Um, that are on our team that have received their uh, um, education, their degree. And so to me as an owner, to me as a coach, um, that makes me feel uh, proud to have young men that have put in the sacrifice because we all know uh, we've all been to, to the university or a university and we all know that it's not easy. But is it worth it? Yes. And so... To accomplish something that's not easy but well worth it takes sacrifice. So um, I will pose that same question to you. I'm Jamel Calloway. Uh, yes, sir. 
Tell me about an accomplishment in your life that you are most proud of. My greatest accomplishment is having my son. Mm-hmm. Amen. Amen. Mm -hmm. um, elaborate on it. Tell, um, tell the listeners how, of course, you and I know, <laughs> and some of the listeners know, but uh, talk a little bit how having a son and leaving a legacy can be or should be or is your greatest accomplishment. Of course, I'm sure you have many more, but when you talk about uh, us as African-American men, uh, African-American ballplayers, the, the stigma is that we sometimes maybe are traveling the world, maybe don't have the uh, necessary time to be here in the United States with our family because we're traveling and working. Some people have the luxury of working here in the United States. Uh, um, I won't say unfortunately. I'll, I would rather use fortunately. That's our case. We're blessed to be able to play basketball as a job for a living to take care of our family. So um, talk about that a little more. I don't want to put you on the spot too much, but just, just tell us how having a son um, can change your life or having a kid can change your life. And Jamel still here? Did we lose him? I'm still here, Coach. I would say I would say having my son is my greatest accomplishment because I never planned on having kids ever. Mm -hmm. And when I found out I was having a son, I was actually in a a, a very peculiar situation, lifestyle wise. Mm -hmm. So it made me change my whole outlook on life, knowing that I had somebody coming that depend on me, and I couldn't put myself in strenuous situations that would allow me not to be here for him. So. I would say that's my biggest change, and it showed me exactly what love and responsibility is when you don't have love, when it's not for yourself, it's for somebody else. It's actually genuine love and care and concern for another human being besides self. I have never had that before having a son, not for my mother, not for nobody. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's pretty interesting. Very deep. Uh, very well said. Very well said. Um, Let's go back to uh, Keith Jackson here. Keith Jackson from Newark, New Jersey, born and raised. Uh, uh, Jamel is from Queens, New York. Shaquem is from Crestview, Florida. So, uh, Keith, talk to me a little bit about basketball growing up in Newark, New Jersey. Uh, even though Newark isn't the capital, uh, it's, it's one of the major cities, if not the most known city in New Jersey, along with Jersey City, which is right across the bridge from New York. And so mm -hmm. talk to us about the difference between growing up, uh, let's say, playing basketball um, across the bridge, as they say. Uh, the New York guys always think that basketball is number one there. Uh, me, of course, I think basketball is number one in Richmond, Virginia. So talk to me about that that little comparison that you guys, I'm sure you've heard it, been dealing with uh, all of your life, and I'm sure you guys have uh, always battled and competed against, but tried to carve out your own niche uh, in the basketball in New Jersey. Well, definitely for me, uh, uh, I actually spent a lot of time at the Y, believe it or not, or if I wasn't at the Y, I was at a lot of parks, uh, whether that had been in South Orange or in Maplewood. Um, Believe it or not, actually, I know, um, if I'm not mistaken, I just heard Lewis Orr's name. When he coached at Seton Hall, I actually I played in two overnight camps two years in a row when Lewis Orr was the coach. Um, he was somebody that I actually talked to when I was younger, um, when I played, because I didn't play any organized ball anywhere else. So I guess he's seen kind of a – he's seen something in me before I even seen something in myself. So uh, that was one of the first – mentor and coach that I ever met was Lewis Orr. Um, didn't really call any fouls growing up at all. <laughs> I didn't know, I didn't even know that you could really use your body to get a call in a matter until I moved to Arizona. So, um, the way how I thought basketball was played, it's not really played once you put an organized factor into it. Um, but it's definitely played a lot different on the East Coast than it is on, on the West in my fair opinion. Definitely, definitely. Um, shout out, of course, to the legend Lewis Orr. 
Um, I don't know if our broadcasters know who Lewis Orr is, but NBA legend uh, Lewis Orr. Um, I think Lewis Orr played for the Knicks uh, back in the heyday, uh, and he is a legend. And from what I understand, Jamel, he was your uh, uh, head coach. So he has uh, not only has his own legacy, but he has given back to young men uh, like uh, Keith and Jamel. So it goes to show you that the the job or the life of a legend um, is just not to become a legend and go home and sit in the house. Um, the the ex- the expectations or the the uh, the things that someone like a Lewis Orr has learned. Throughout his career, I'm sure he's changed the life of not just you two young men, but I'm sure he's changed the life of thousands of others. So um, I wanted to to uh, make sure that our uh, listeners understood that, realize who Lewis Orr is and what he has I kind of missed that. Did you say he was coached by Lewis Orr? I, um, yeah. when, he was, when he was coaching at Seton Hall, he, uh, uh-huh. I, I played in two overnight camps that were two years in a row. And I talked to Lewis a couple of times. Hey, Keith, how old are you, real quick? How old are you? Twenty five. So you was probably around the same. I, I think I, I think I might have played with you, bro. Honestly, because my mom lived in Newark. I played with Coach B in Newark. I played for the North Rams. Damn near my whole, my whole uh, high school career. That was my age. Oh, New York, New Jersey thing going on, huh? I get it. Yeah, exactly. I, I get it. Um, guys. Uh, once again, I um, want to say thank you for you guys being here. Uh, can't say thank you enough. I know a couple of you guys um, are working at night. We have um, Kasim Green, who is trying to join us. He has some overnight work that he's doing a- as well. Uh, and I just can't say enough to you guys. for um, I've been uh, under the weather for the past week or so, so we've been planning to do this, trying to do this for the past week. And I'm so glad that my voice sounds so much better. Um, um, I didn't want to embarrass you guys so much, but um, I feel better. So um, I appreciate you guys being patient, uh, waiting for the old fella to get well. Of course, it takes me a little longer to heal up uh, than it does you young guys, you know. Uh, guys, tell me something about basketball, right? And so when I say basketball, tell me something that you try to work on. Uh, right now, um, each one of you um, is in your hometown working, getting prepared for our trip that's coming up to Buenos Aires, Argentina on January 7th through the 14th. What do you guys, uh, what does a normal day look like for Keith Jackson? What's a normal day for Shaquem Jackson? Uh, What's a normal day for Jamel Calloway, start to finish? So uh, let's say um, workout-wise, I know some of you guys may be working or whatever, but um, talk to us a little bit about your work out schedule your workout regimen what do you do what do you like to do what do you like to eat um what time you wake up what time you go to bed uh we'll start with um Shaquem Jackson tell me a little bit about uh, your your routine pro routine okay okay it all depends on the day if I have to go to work or not with my pop but let's say I don't have work I'll wake up about 8, get all my sleep, go about sleep about 12, stay up pretty late. Just, I don't know, I can't sleep. But anyway, I get up, I ride the bike to my grandma's house, about a mile. Then I go up the road, run around the track, I say another mile. Mm-hmm. Then I go back to my granny's, most likely my uncle or somebody's going to cook there, we eat some good grits, eggs, eat a good bad food for you. Um, I chill, I just chill out with my family. I hit the gym PM and I stay in there about to be honest, there's not no set time. I've been a more it's more than an hour and a half, more than two hours, whatever I'm, how long I'm in the mess, just shooting. Little ball handling drill. That's what I'm working on mainly right now, my ball handling drills. I'm stressing it to like to the point point those new little finishes. And at the time while I'm working out, I be training my, my little cousins. I bring my little cousin in with me. So I push them to better their self because if not they ain't going to do that just play play the game with her then go home and repeat right um, one thing that I heard you say that uh, you told me that before that I've given you so much credit for not only are you trying to get ready to uh, go to our TNBT Argentina Pro Combine 
you're also training your cousins. Um, how old are they? I got I got cousins from ten to sixteen. Right. So that means that you're not only trying to find your own path in pro basketball, you're taking the time to give back to our youth. And so even though um, they're your family, uh, just you being your age and what you have going on with work, for you to take the time to think about someone else, uh, some small kids that hopefully one day uh, will want to play pro basketball like you. It says a lot about you. It says, about, um, it says a lot about your upbringing. And it also says a lot about your family. Because most guys uh, um, that are young guys that are trying to find their own way, uh, we don't have time, or we have time, but we're not thinking back about, hey, who else can I help while I'm climbing this ladder? Most people climb to the top and then try, normally then try to pull someone up. Very seldom do you see someone halfway up the ladder extend their hand back down to say, hey, Come on up with me, or I'm um, enjoy this ride with me, or learn with me while I'm climbing. I can also teach while I'm climbing. Um, that's not easy, brother. Um, that's not easy. So you ought to be commended for that, for giving knowledge back to youth. I'm um, kind of like what I'm doing with you guys. I try to share my knowledge. We're normally on the phone. Um, I think I promised you guys tonight that I wouldn't keep you on the phone three hours as usual. But uh, you enjoy talking to uh, me anyway. I enjoy talking to young men about basketball. I enjoy talking to young men about life and uh, just sharing knowledge. It, 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 it's so important for me, I'm sure, for you as well, just sharing things that you have learned from someone else. Of course, um, you guys spoke of Lewis Orr. Uh, all of us played high school, college, and we're working on pros. And so I'm sure... Each one of you guys had someone along the way to help you, to, sh to share info, to bounce things off. Um, um, Keith, um, Keith Jackson, talk a little bit, um, elaborate a little bit um, on that same question. Okay. So uh, basic day for me, like for instance, tomorrow, uh, beginning of my week, um, I wake up, I, I get at least eight to nine hours of rest. Uh, I try to get, get in bed before 11 or before 12. I try. If not, then I'm up at at least 8 or 9. I wake up. I make a, a smoothie, whether it be fruit or uh, or veggie, uh, whatever the case may be. And then I'll eat probably a bag of oatmeal dry. <laughs> I know a lot of people probably think that's nasty, but that's just what I do. Uh, then I also drink a bottle of water. Uh, then I'll go hit the weight room for about an hour. Then I'll go get us some shots. Uh, to end with that, I'll get about a mile in on the bike and then I'll do 10 sets of sprinting for 30 seconds and not sprinting at all um, to finish the workout. Then I'll go home, uh, eat a cool little, not a heavy one, but a light lunch. Um, usually I'll end up talking to my girl on the phone too and miss that just to kind of get my timing down right. Um, at the end of that conversation, go back to the gym. Uh, start working on different skills, whether it be down low, also working on coming off the screen as well. Um, from um, from um, from the top of the key or from the wing, um, shooting a lot of corner jumpers, whether it be mid, mid, mid range or threes. And then I'll finish with ball handling and conditioning at the end. So doing stuff at full speed on the court, but not necessarily just running back and forth on the court with just the ball with, no other purpose so I, I do game speed stuff to to kind of like help stay in shape and then I'll, um, I'll go home eat a decent dinner and I'm, I'm pretty much done for the day so I'm getting there twice and then looking at the, end of the day and then that's it got you got you um Jamel you still there with us yes coach same question brother um tell our listeners tell our young men um about your pro routine uh same type of thing what you eat uh, what your drills consist of, your gym time, and uh, what time you shut it down. Um, let us into your pro secrets. Well, I literally got it listed on my phone, so I can tell you guys. <laughs> Good. Good. Uh, Sundays I work. Uh, I work out nine to twelve, and I uh, I have recovery time and lunch from one to two. I take a nap from two thirty to four thirty, and then I go to work from five to seven in the morning. Uh, Mondays, I work 3 to 12, so I don't really go to the gym on Mondays. I do everything at home, like push-ups, sit-ups, 
dips. I got the pull up bar. I got a dip machine, so I do all of that at home and run on the treadmill about a mile and a half, two miles in the morning. And when I get home from work, um, Tuesdays, um, Tuesday I get in there in the morning about six thirty. I try to get in there by six thirty seven at the latest. I'm there till about ten ten thirty, and in that time, uh, I get a depending on what day it is, I'll either lift body uh, upper body or lower body for a half hour to 45 minutes then i go get in the pool for 15 20 minutes and then i, I get up my 15 to 2,000 shots before i before i leave and that's trying to make at least 700 out of those trying to go at least 50 percent from the field um wednesday through friday is my two days so i go in 6 30 in the morning till about 9 30 10 come home eat relax and i go back again from uh from about five to eight and then after that, I have dinner and take it down with the family. Mm-hmm. Good, man. Sounds like a full day. Sounds like a full day. But sometimes um, it's good to write your day down so that you exactly. can kind of follow it. Uh, I'm not kind of follow it so that you can follow it to the T down to the minute to the second because um, there are only 24 hours in a day. Sometimes, exactly. like you say, you have work, you have family. And then you try to throw some gym time in there. Uh, and wow, um, you guys are still young men, of course. So um, you guys have to have time for for fun. I mean, of course, when I say fun, uh, spending time with family, football, basketball, NBA comes on. So uh, it sounds like all of you guys have a full day. Of course, I talk to you guys all the time. I realize this, but need some other guys that are trying to figure out some more pro guys or if you got some middle school young men or some high school young men just trying to figure out how do I plan my day to become successful. Um, I'm glad that you guys were able to share some secrets uh, from your routine. <clears throat> um, uh, and I think that's important because if something – is working for you. Um, I think it's important to share with other people, especially if there are other people, <coughs> and, and other people that are trying to go uh, your way, or other people that are trying to go uh, your your. Um, um, Jamel, you still there? I really appreciate you. Um, Jamel, you there? Um, Jamel, you still there, brother? Oh, yeah, that's crazy. That's ridiculous. Good. Um, what I want you guys to do is, once again, state your uh, your social media handles for everyone so that uh, everyone can kind of uh, get in contact with you again. And we'll do it one more time before the show is over. Um, Shaquem, go ahead and holler yours out real quick. Uh, uh, that's on Snapchat, Instagram, is Shaquem20, S-H-Y, and on Twitter, that underscore 20. Um, I think you were breaking up a little bit. Um, Shaquille, repeat that for me. Um, I think we were had, uh, we were having a little lag in communication there. Hey, repeat yeah, everything for me again. Uh, okay, Snapchat and Instagram is Shaquille Twenty S H Y K E E M Twenty, and on Twitter is the guy underscore Twenty. Okay, uh, Keith Jackson, shout your, uh, yours out for us one more time. Uh, it's going to be on, on Instagram. It's going to be that underscore SK. Uh, then on Twitter, it's going to be Keith underscore Jackson 24. Uh, and then on Snapchat, it's going to be Keith J underscore 24. And then on uh, Facebook, we got Samuel Keith. Okay. Um, Jamel Calloway, I um, know you yes, got sir. a lot going on, brother, but uh, how about that was, your... That was my apology. I had That's a, okay. I had no worries, man. Problem. We understand. Um, no worries. Shout out your uh, email and all your social media stuff for us real quick. On all social media platforms is Mel with a three M three L L underscore Mamba Mamba M A M B A. Good, good man. Uh, we got a couple more questions for you guys. We won't keep you too much longer. Um, yes, sir. Um, once again, we appreciate you guys being with us, man. I'm participating in our uh, TNBT Argentina uh, podcast, man. We're trying to uh, get everyone. 
uh, on board. I'm trying to get those guys that are traveling with us uh, January 7th through the 14th. We want you guys to try to share your experience with our listeners, try to uh, share your basketball experience uh, with our listeners. Uh, these three young men, along with the uh, rest of our team, will be traveling. They will be doing uh, interviews down in Argentina during our combine. So you will be hearing from these young men uh, once again. Uh, got a couple more questions for you guys here. Tell me, tell me, uh, Keith Jackson. What is your superpower as a teacher of youth? Patience. Mm-hmm. Very good. Very good. I'm elaborate a little bit so that our listeners can understand. Uh, but um, elaborate your definition of patience with our youth. Uh, I know for sure that it takes time uh, for anything, especially for someone who's young to, to learn and grasp onto a concept truly. You probably gonna repeat yourself multiple times when you're trying to explain something, and then hopefully, depending on how you explain something that one day, they maybe get clicked in their brain the correct way. But you have the patience to keep going with it to them to, to teach whatever it is that you were trying to get through to them. So I know that I have that um, to be down to size. So I know a lot of people don't. So I, I kind of take pride in it. Right, right. Same question for you. Shaquem Jackson, what is your superpower as a teacher of youth? Um, we were just talking about you teaching your family members, your cousins, your family, younger guys. What's your superpower, brother? Because it sounds like you have one. Nothing's going to be given to you. I tell them that all the time. Nothing's going to be given to you. You got to work for it. You won't. Um, I just, just I tell them. They love sport. I tell them, don't uh, let sports use you. Use sports to get what you want. Mm. So basically, my coach always told me, that he like, uh, don't let basketball use you. Use basketball as far as, far as uh, school. Let like, basketball take you like, across the world. Mm-hmm. Very good. Very good. Uh, the, reason, um, the reason that I thought this, this question was um, applicable to you, especially you just spoke of your family that you train, and I don't care who you are. Uh, I'm 48, so I can't expect you guys who are 25, 6, 7, 8 to understand everything that I'm saying because you guys have some, you guys have never traveled, some have never played ball, uh, some guys don't know the terminology, what have you. So I don't get mad at guys that are 25 who don't understand what I'm saying. So I think patience is the key word or the special word here that you guys are using. Keith said patience. Uh, you have to have it. Uh, someone had patience with us, whether it be a mother, father, uncle, coach, guidance counselor, teacher. Someone had patience with us because you can't tell me that you three guys were pro basketball players, pro ready eight years ago. So I'm sure that someone had to teach you, someone had to talk to you, show you, explain. So it's good to know that you uh, two guys have learned that. Um, Jamel Calloway, you still there with us, brother? Yes, sir. Good, man. What's your superpower um, as a teacher of you? As a teacher of me. Um, as a <laughs> teacher of youth. 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 Of youth. Youth. Yes. youth. Oh, as a teacher of youth. Mm -hmm. Um... I would say uh, my superpower as a teacher of youth, I would say um, it's just my ability to give back what I've been, what, I, what I've learned and the lessons I've been taught through life. Um, mm -hmm. I currently, I currently train four kids Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Mm -hmm. So everything I've learned in life and everything basketball has given me, my uncle has shown me, I share with them. And I try to pass it on through my experiences and tough situations I've been in and situations I shouldn't have been in. Instead of playing basketball, I, I share everything with them so that they can get a full grasp and understand that it's, it's not one sided and it's not as easy as you think. You get everything to be given to you or you can work for everything. And just you, you'll be in between both spectrums, but you got to use everything you learn in life to be successful because failure is not an option. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Well said. You three guys 
Um, I wanted the audience to understand that uh, our guys are not just concerned about themselves, but are also concerned and have time and the mental capacity, which is most important, to help young kids. Uh, we have so many young men that we teach basketball to, that we mentor, uh, whether it be uh, here in uh, Richmond, Virginia, um, the United States, uh, Argentina, Venezuela, Las Vegas, wherever. Uh, you have to take the time to give back. And it really helps when you're able um, to give back to your community. Uh, that's important because uh, we are products of our environment. We are products of our community. But um, it shouldn't stop there. Uh, I'm a firm believer. Uh, my son is from Venezuela. Um, I have God kids mm -hmm. all over the world. So um, I like to try to give back to everyone. Um, I don't care race, uh, creed, gender. It um, doesn't matter to me. Um, giving back is giving back. So um, mm -hmm. if I'm in uh, Bulgaria or I'm in Chile or I'm in Argentina, Venezuela, Uruguay, um, it doesn't matter whether or not I speak their language or not. Um, I think the beauty of basketball is that it is universal. <clears throat> Mm -hmm. uh, to shoot, pass, dribble, to have camaraderie with your team um, is very important. Uh, very important to have uh, the capacity to explain what you're doing um, to someone else. And I'm not sure that I was capable of doing that when I was you guys' age. Um, I'm not sure that I was capable of sharing what I was doing and teaching what I was doing. So uh, um, I think it's why I'm so uh, hell-bent on giving back to our youth as an older guy because I see the impact that I can have or that I do have. Um, I have so many of my buddies, uh, my basketball brothers, our TMBT family that are giving back to youth. Um, people that inspire me uh, in my hometown of Richmond, Virginia. Uh, Raymond Neblet comes to mind. Uh, he has a camp, free camp here in Richmond, Virginia, uh, every summer for over 400 kids free. And he feeds them twice a day. Uh, one of my real brothers that I can say he's on the front line, I'm giving back to youth. And uh, everything that he does comes out of his own pocket. No sponsors. I'm kind of like ourselves, no sponsors. Uh, we have people that, that really believe in what we do. Um, especially him, he has people that donate so much of their time, uh, energy, uh, and supplies. So uh, people like Derek Tompkins, uh, Lawrence Walden, uh, Raymond Neblett, uh, Kendrick Warren, uh, Reggie Tennyson, uh, Vance Harmon, Ty White at John Marshall, uh, my alma mater. These guys are giving back. Uh, so... Uh, I'm not on the front line with the youth like some of my brothers are as far as high school coaches. Uh, we do have our own AAU program, so we try to give back. We have so many people that say, hey, uh, this group of kids needs help or, or like this kid needs help. And so I'm blessed to have people know where my heart is and know what I'm trying to do because I can't uh, discover everyone that needs help from a basketball standpoint or an educational standpoint or from a mentor standpoint. But I have people that say, hey, Milt, this is someone that I would like for you to work with. Or this is a group of people or a group of kids that I would like for you to work with. So uh, I just consider myself uh, also Mrs. Uh, Lauren Coleman um, at Manchester Middle School. Uh, those uh, people are doing a great job. Um, they are on the front line uh, and are doing a great job. And I just consider myself to be part of the village. And um, back in my day, um, it was an old saying that it takes a village to raise kids. And so I just mm -hmm. like to consider myself as part of that village. Of course, our teachers, counselors, police officers, uh, sheriff's office, uh, all of these people are part of that village as well. So um, when I'm called upon from the Richmond City Police Department to help with the a clinic for kids, um, I feel blessed. Or when the sheriff, um, Sheriff Woody, or Mrs. Irvin asks me um, to do something, 
Um, I feel blessed because um, it makes me feel like I'm giving back. I'm part of a village and that I don't care who you are. It takes a group of people to make things happen. Uh, this trip that we're going on, um, it doesn't happen by night. We have so many people uh, helping us in Argentina, uh, in Las Vegas, uh, in Richmond, Virginia, uh, Washington, D.C. Um, Coach Keith Williams is uh, uh, doing some great things up in Washington, D.C. And so I feel blessed to have people that I know that are already giving back. And so I can just say, hey, how can I help you to continue doing what you're doing? Uh, very important for me, very important to have young men like yourselves that are educated young men. The most important thing that I try to uh, say to our coaches that are looking for players, and I need everyone to know this, I always brag on you guys all the time that you guys are college graduates. You guys, uh, some are college graduates, all of you guys have attended a university, some way, shape, or form. And so uh, um, I like to honor my guys as being educated African-American men or educated uh, men, educated Caucasian young men, uh, educated Asian young men, uh, educated Indian young men. Whatever your race, um, I like for you to be educated because that way when you have educated people representing your business, uh, our TMBT family, <clears throat> I mean, it makes me look good. I mean, it makes us look good. And so um, I really appreciate uh, everything that you guys are doing. Uh, really appreciate you guys being team players uh, and just being uh, very serious about what we're trying to do. <coughs> um, all of us know how hard it is to play professional basketball. Um, I was blessed to play uh, 12 some years and it's a blessing so every blessing that you receive you should pass two back I mean, if that makes any sense what I'm saying uh, we're going to be wrapping up here in a second got one more question for you guys and I'm going to let you guys go I promised early that I wouldn't keep you uh, Keith Jackson for three hours tonight I'm going to hold on to my promise I'm going to keep my promise um, um, in closing Tell us about a time when things didn't go as you planned in your career. Um, I know all of you guys were with other agencies or other consultants or what have you. Talk to uh, um, our audience a little bit about a time. It uh, doesn't have to be in your pro career. and It could be in your high school career, college career. Tell us about a time when things didn't go as you planned in your career. Uh, Jamel Calloway, we'll start with you. I would say uh, that for the road in my basketball career, basketball career, some hasn't gone as planned. But um, I would say the most significant, what I would, I would say my most recent would be my trip to Mexico because I, I was celebrating, I was excited and ready for the upcoming season, and it just didn't go as planned. I wasn't planning on getting hit by a car. <laughs> so, right, right. Well, the good thing that, is that, that actually derailed. I felt like I had finally made it and got to my point. Uh, hard work and and go bust open the doors with my professional career, and it just just wasn't time yet. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, same thing to you. I'm Shaquem Jackson, uh, Crestview, Florida. Um, I know you guys have like uh, probably like 85 degrees. I talked to you today. You guys are like 85, 70 degrees uh, there, brother. So, um, I, um, I know you got stuff to do outside, and it's nice Sunday night football. But uh, talk to us a little bit about when things didn't go as you planned in your career. Uh, it's probably had to be the time where I, my high school year, or after I graduated, having nowhere to go. And the school's about to start with nowhere to go play basketball at, and had to make some shape. I, I said that. Probably. It happened a couple of times because after I left that that same year, they had took the scholarship away again because he was going to bring another player or whatever. Then, but I ended, ended up getting it back the following school year. So I have to say that that was a bump in the road. Good, good. Um, Keith Jackson, how about you, brother? Same question. Um, I'm gonna just I'm gonna go. I'm, I'm gonna skip past. 
college and, 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 and any of that. I'm going to go back way back to like where I was about to walk away from the game because I didn't think I'd possibly be good enough. Um, I had a coach named Holly Woods, uh, pretty much another coach that seen something in me that I didn't see in myself yet. Um, again, I didn't have many looks when I came out of high school. So uh, playing under him in the AAU circuit and then just – pretty much getting a tough coaching from him. I guess he was a Harlem Globetrotter as well. Um, his son plays as well right now, so he plays at Portland State. So he, he's trained him his entire life too. So um, he instilled my athletic ability um, that I had that I didn't know that I really had at all, but he kind of pulled it out of me. So um, that kind of grew in me as a player. Um, probably my my junior year of college, I think I had the most. I think I had 40 or, or 45 dunks in one season. So I'm pretty sure that's something that made him proud because that's something he would tell me to do because it's something I can build off of so I can score and whatnot throughout the game. So just that, what he did alone, I'm pretty sure he doesn't even know that he had that much of a significant input in my life, but he probably saved my career in, my, in, in the end. Nice. Nice, man. Uh, the beautiful thing is that you guys – <clears throat> um, remember uh, times when things didn't go so well or didn't go as you planned and like we started our show off talking about uh, those things can be motivation uh, uh, those things can be uh, motivation so that when things are going well you stay neutral you stay grounded and you stay focused because at any point in time no one on this uh, podcast has a crystal ball. No one knows what's going to happen next week or next year. Therefore, I believe in remaining neutral, remaining grounded, uh, sticking to my beliefs, and continuing and spreading my positive energy. And things that I can control, um, I can control. Things that I can't control, I try not to lose sleep over. I just try to be prepared for all situations because you never know what's going to be presented to you, but uh, you have to be ready for it. Um, you have to be ready, and you have to be able to adapt on the fly. That's most important, uh, being able to adapt, being able to switch directions and more or less not miss a beat. Especially in basketball, um, I'm sure you guys know we talk about it all the time, but uh, international basketball is not like your normal job. It's so uh, unpredictable uh, that you have to be ready. Um, you have to have every tool on your tool belt so that when something presents itself to you, you can grab that tool and continue on. Um, one thing that I was taught, um, I heard you guys mention family members, and uh, I was taught by an uncle, uh, my uncle, St. Elmo Johnson Sr., uh, uh, Jr., taught me that to do the job well, you have to have the right tool. So I applied that to basketball and what I was uh, pursuing at the time, and it's one of those things where uh, you don't know when you're going to need your hammer or your screwdriver or your saw but one thing's for sure eventually you will need everything um if you play long enough and you live long enough you're going to need every tool on your belt whether that be the belt of the the job of basketball life family or whatever you have you're going to need a special uh something to deal with it and some of us most of us have it some don't uh and so the good thing is that if you don't have it on your tool belt that you have an uncle or a friend or someone that you guys can pull from and say hey where can i get that tool to add to my collection so that i will never be caught without the correct tool again right and i don't know if that makes any sense what i'm saying um, you guys are kind of young. We talk about this all the time, but um, it's not a problem. Um, you guys are doing so well. I'm proud of you. I'm sure your family is proud of you as well. I'm sure all 
all of your coaches, your high school, your, your college coaches are proud of you. I'm sure your community is proud of you. And so I try to um, instill that in my guys that I'm proud of you. Everything you guys are doing, um, you guys are team players. Uh, you guys work well together. And, hey, you guys are inspiring youth. So me as a coach, uh, me as the owner of the team, um, I couldn't ask for anything more. Um, I have a good group of guys, and, and you guys hear me say this all the time, Keith Jackson uh, basketball is 80% mental, 20% physical. And I really mm-hmm. believe that. Um, I really believe that. Um, once again, before we, uh, we're going to shut down here pretty soon, wanted you guys one last time. Um, I think we lost Jamel Calloway. Uh, he'll probably try to chime back in uh, before we get out. I uh, want you guys, uh, Keith and Shaquem, to shout out your social media handles one last time before we close. Okay, so my IG, uh, again, uh, is that S A. Um, then for Twitter, again, it's Keith underscore Jackson 24. Um, and then for Snapchat, it's Keith J underscore 24. And then Facebook is Samuel Keith. Okay. Shaquem? Um, uh, I, got, I got you. For Twitter, it's the guy underscore 20. For Snapchat, Instagram, is Shaquem20, S-H-Y-K-E-E-M, 20. Good. Um, I get so many uh, of our followers, TMBT family, that ask us, hey, how can I get in contact with your guys? Great group of guys. I'm going to have some questions. We have players that want questions answered by current team members. So I feel blessed that you guys are willing to share your info, your knowledge, uh, your experiences and your positive energy with other young men that may be in the middle uh, in the middle ground of trying to figure out what they want to do, what team they want to join to continue their pro career. Uh, so I feel blessed to have you guys uh, available to share, wanting to share because um, don't be fooled. I'm sure you guys know some pro players that don't share anything. Some guys don't talk to you. Some guys don't share secrets, what they're eating, what their weight workout is like. Uh, Some guys just don't share. So um, I'm proud to have guys on our team that are willing to share team players and want to see other people do good. And I think that there's a way for, kind of like Keith was saying, Shaquem, there's a way to have our guys pull someone else up while you're pulling yourself up. So while you're climbing up that ladder uh, of pro basketball or of life, you can also reach down and grab someone and pull someone up with you. So uh, that's huge for me uh, to have you guys here tonight uh, on our TNBT uh, Argentina podcast, uh, TNBT Las Vegas of course, this is our show, Globe Warriors, uh, with our TNBT pros talking a little bit about their pro career, their life as a pro basketball player. Guys, kind of once again want to say how proud I am of you. Continue doing what you're doing. Continue to, to strive for greatness and uh, continue to inspire youth, the youth in your city, the youth on social media um, is why I always preach to my guys that for the young kids that look up to you, and we never know who's checking in on us. We never know uh, as role models. We never know who's looking at us. You may not know who's looking, but you best believe that some young basketball player is watching you. So um, it's why I always preach positivity on social media, positivity with the words that come out of our mouth. Uh, positivity in life so we have to live it of course in real life we have to be positive people positive energy people but on your social media and websites you off um you also have to preach positivity because we want whatever young man or young lady who looks at your social media we want them to to learn in a positive manner from you and then they will continue to spread your positive energy that they've gotten from you, they will pass it on to the next person. And that's all we can ask for. So 
Um, tonight, Shaquem Jackson, Keith Jackson, Jamel Callaway, um, Kasim Green. We were trying to get on here. We had some some difficulties with him. He's from Philadelphia. We'll have him on our next show, guys. Um, I really want to say thank you. I uh, really want to to say uh, just keep keep up the great work. Any closing words that you guys may have for family members, uh, wives, fiancés, uh, youth that you train, uh, anything that you guys want to say um, individually um, before we close shop? Keith Jackson. Um, pretty much, I'm, I'm just thankful for everything that, that that's pretty much going on all at once, man, to be honest with you. Um, anything that's going forward, I, I pretty much just want to thank God and the mist and uh also you and T and B T and um can't wait to see what's what's gonna happen going forward pretty much. Yes sir. Um Shaquille Jackson, any closing closing words to your fan group, to your to your fans, your family, your your social media followers? Key question for what you want in life. Don't give up. Yes sir. Yes sir. <laughs> Well, that'll be it for us tonight uh, on our TNBT Media Podcast, uh, The Globe Warriors. Uh, Once again, thanks to all of our listeners. Thanks for all of our players for tuning in, sharing your positive energy. And uh, we will be back later on in the week uh, with more podcasts. Um, Each one of these players will be doing an individual uh, blog on our website. So for those listeners... Um, Please stay tuned to our vlog, uh, TMBT vlog. We'll also have a TMBT blog by each one of these uh, players that we have traveling with us to Argentina. And we want to share the experience. We want you to kind of feel like you're traveling with us for those that are not. And uh, it'll help you understand what we're doing, uh, what we're trying to uh, do to help these young men. But more importantly, what they're doing to try to help themselves. So... Uh, We'll be signing off tonight. I want to say thank you to everyone. Uh, God bless. Take care.